Okay, you've seen the demonstration on rotational inertia. Let's find out what it means mathematically. We'll start with a mass and a force. It's going to cause an acceleration. The bigger the mass, the less the acceleration for a constant force. Well, that's the inertia. Think of it as the linear inertia. Now imagine what would happen if that mass was on the end of a rod mounted on a pivot. That force will make the object rotate. F equals ma still works. But you have to think of the acceleration as being tangential to the circle. Now, if you think back to earlier in the year, you know that we can multiply the force times this radius and we'd have a torque. Well, if I multiply that side by r, I have to multiply this side by r as well. Let's talk conversions. Theta times r would be arc length. Omega times r is the velocity tangential. And alpha times r is the acceleration tangential. We'll now apply it to this formula. We can replace a with alpha times r. Rearrange a little and we have mr squared alpha. And of course, force times the radius is the torque. Now this quantity is very important. It's the mass times the radius squared. It's based on the geometry of our system. The bigger the radius, the smaller the acceleration given a constant torque. Well, that sounds like inertia. It's the rotational inertia. So torque equals I alpha. Just like F equals MA, this is Newton's second law in linear terms. That's Newton's second law in angular terms. So here we have the formula for rotational inertia if this mass is at radius r. So here we have I equals mr squared. That's the rotational inertia if the mass is at a distance from the pivot. And we have torque equals I alpha. If we apply a torque to this system, it will undergo an angular acceleration. This all sounds good in theory, but we have to test it in the laboratory. Let's see if it really works. We're going to get the turntable, wrap some string around it, have it go over here. We'll have a mass. We're going to have our one kilogram each at a certain distance from the center. Well, we have 100 grams hanging off the pulley. We'll get the radius of the axle by making this thing turn, and we'll watch the drop of the weight. Here's where it's starting. I'll unwind it one rotation. Now it's down here. You should be able to calculate the radius of the axle. Now, how much force do you think this string is going to be pulling on that axle with? If you say it's going to be equal to the weight, well, you got a problem with that. If that tension was equal to the weight, this weight would not drop. But take a look at this. Look how slow that's falling. That acceleration is so small that we can make an approximation and say that the tension is equal to the weight. It simplifies the calculations for us. Now you saw it here, it falls slowly. That's the only reason why we're making this approximation. Now each of these one kilogram masses is 18 centimeters center to the center. That's the radius for each one. Well, we're gonna treat them like point masses. The camera is giving us a little parallax error, but I'm lining it up myself right here, and it's 36 centimeters all the way across. Well, to do this experimentally, you're going to have to time this now. In order to find the rotational inertia of these masses experimentally, we have to time the turntable. We'll do one rotation. Ready, set, go. Stop. You should now be able to calculate the rotational inertia of this whole system. Then we'll do it again to find the inertia of the turntable. Okay, we're going to time one rotation. Ready, set, go. Stop. So let's lay out what you need to do. You know that weight is mg. Because this is falling so slowly, we'll approximate that the tension in the rope is mg. You have to find the radius of the axle by seeing how far this weight fell in one rotation. This will allow you to calculate the torque applied to the turntable. It's going to be equal to the tension in the rope times the radius of the axle. 
Well, that torque will be equal to I alpha, I being the rotational inertia of the system. You can get the alpha from the time that you measured on the video for the one rotation. So this is going to be the inertia of the system experimentally. Hey, we do it again, but this time with the weights off. The torque will be the same. The inertia is going to be of the turntable without the masses. This is going to be found from the time for one rotation without the masses. So now you'll be able to calculate the inertia of the turntable experimentally. Well, guess what we want? We want the inertia for the masses. Just subtract the turntable from the inertia of the system. And so we'll have the inertia for the masses experimentally. What are we going to do? We need the inertia for the masses theoretically. How do we get that? Here's the theoretical formula. Let's get that number and that number and compare the two. Watch the video. See if you can do this.